Today on our 2013 Toyota Avalon, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Hopkins plug-in simple vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector. And that's going to be part number HM1114. One eight two zero. So here's where our wiring is going to look like once we have it installed. It is designed to stay on the inside of our vehicle until we're ready to tow. And it's going to provide us with a four pole flat trailer connector, giving us all the required lights to get down the road safely, such as our tail lights, turn signals, and our stop lights. And whenever we're not towing, we can open up the trunk. And the cushion here is going to provide enough cushion to where it's not going to damage the wire and Hopkins has put that sheathing around it. But whenever we're ready to store it, we can either store it here in the trunk or we can lift up the floor covering and store it by our spare tire so it'll be out of the way. Now as far as the installation goes for our wiring, it is going to be rather simple. We're just going to have to remove this threshold plastic panel at the back of our trunk pull back the carpet and we're going to have a few connections behind our tail lights that we're going to plug into. There's no cutting or splicing required so we're not going to have to worry about any of that. We'll also need to run one wire up to the battery so we can get power. Also put in a fuse holder to make sure that our wiring is going to be protected. So now that we've seen the end result of our wiring, let's show you how to get it installed. To begin our installation, you're going to want to open up the trunk of your Avalon and we're going to have to remove the threshold here so we can gain access behind the tail light to get to the wiring. Now we're going to have our tie down hook and then right below that we'll have a push pin on each side that we're going to have to remove. So you can take a trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver and you're going to want to come behind the tie down hook and just push outward and we can pop it out. And then if we come down a little bit to where the push pin is, we're going to need to remove that as well. And you're going to want to pop that center section out first. And then we can come underneath the outer area and pull the rest of the push pin out. And we're going to do that for both sides. Once we have all of them removed, we're just going to reach down, kind of pull up. And you may have to come along the edge using your flathead screwdriver or trim panel tool and release some clips as we go along the edge here. Once we have all the clips removed, we can pull the threshold out and we'll set it aside. Now if we move up on our carpeted area, we're going to have another push pin right by our trunk hinge. We'll go ahead and pull that one out as well. And then if we just come and follow it under, we'll have a push pin right here at the top of the trunk lid, right about where the glass meets it. And we're gonna wanna pull that one out as well. That way we have as much room to work with as possible. And that'll be on both sides. Now over on the driver's side, we're gonna go ahead and pull our carpet back. And just to give us a little bit more room, we're gonna go ahead and pull that section that's right above the hinge here. We're going to pull that down and just kind of fold it out of the way for now. But the connector we're going to be looking for is down at the bottom here. It's going to be this white connector and it's got this black plastic like loom around it. Now it is secured to the body so to make it easier on ourselves I'm going to take a trim panel tool and I'm going to pop that clip out so I can get access to the connector. You just want to be careful because you don't want to damage the connector or the clip so that we can put it back when we're done. So now that we have it free we can flip it over and we'll see there's a little tab right there. That's going to be an unlock it so we can push on it may take a flathead screwdriver or something, push on that tab, and pull the connector apart. Now on our Hopkins wiring harness, we'll notice that we're going to have a T-connector. It's got the yellow, brown, and red wires going to it, and it's going to match up with our factory connector. So we'll take the two, plug them into each other, make sure they lock into place, then we can push that tab back into the body of the vehicle. 
Now we can take our converter box and it's gonna have a couple tabs on each side. We're gonna go and find a spot back here out of the way behind the carpet that we can zip tie it to so it'll make sure it's nice and secure. So back here we can just zip tie it to some existing wiring. Take a couple of the included zip ties in our kit, slide them through, and we'll just wrap it around the wiring. Now you do want to make sure that it's going to be out of the way before you tighten it down all the way. So we'll go ahead and put ours over here, a little bit higher towards the taillight side. And then we can only zip tie the other side to some more wiring. Now we can bring our attention to this white wire here. Now our white wire is going to have a ring terminal on it, so we're going to find a spot that we can ground it. Fortunately for us, if we just move towards the center of our trunk, right against the back here, we're going to have a grounding point. So we can just remove that nut and put our ring terminal in place. So I'm going to take a 10 millimeter socket and loosen that nut up. We can take the bolt that we had. Now it will be a little bit tight on the ring terminal, but we're just gonna go ahead and thread it on. That way it can pass through. And once we have it threaded onto our ring terminal, we can replace the nut. Just wanna make sure that whenever you're putting it back in place that you have all the other grounds in place as well. We can just tuck the excess wire behind our panel here so it's out of the way. The red wire that has the buck connector attached to it, we're going to need to run up to our battery. So we can take the included length of red wire they give us in our kit and we're going to strip back one end of the wire. We can slide the bare end into the buck connector and crimp it down. So we should have our red wire and a green wire coming out of the converter box still. Both of these are gonna to need to go over to the passenger side so we can make our connection behind our taillight as well. So I'm gonna route my red and green wire along the threshold here, and then we can pull that carpet back just like we did on the driver's side. So you wanna make sure that you have enough slack, so we'll just leave everything real loose back here for now. And we'll start with our green wire. We're going to be looking for our connector. Now our connector is going to be in generally the same spot, just right at the back of our trunk area. And again, we can take our trim panel tool, our flathead screwdriver, and disconnect that clip so then we can get the connector out. And then we're going to make the connection just like we did on the driver's side. Taking our T connectors and plugging them in to the factory connector. Just tuck all the excess wire back here for now. And we're going to take our red wire and we're going to come along the back side here. And you'll notice that we have our battery over in the corner. I do want to mention since our Avalon is a hybrid, our battery is in the back of the trunk. However, if yours is not and you don't have a battery back there, you will need to run the cable up to the engine bay where the battery is most likely. Now you can go through the passenger compartment and find a spot in the firewall, or you can drop the wire down at the back of the trunk and run it underneath, bringing it up to the battery. The connection will be the same, you'll just have to route the wire up to the engine bay. Now our red wire is gonna have to go to the positive post on our battery, so we wanna make sure that we have enough wire. So again, just make sure you leave everything real loose and estimate about how much wire you're gonna need to reach and then we're going to cut it and strip back the end. This time we're going to be adding in a fuse holder to make sure that our wiring is going to be protected. So we can take our bare wire and slide it into the buck connector and crimp it down. Then we're going to be attaching the ring terminal to the positive post of the battery. So then I'm going to take a 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to loosen the nut up on the top of the battery here. We can slide our ring terminal over the stud and then replace the nut. So with our connections made, all we have to do is secure all of our loose wires and put our panels back in place. I'm just going to zip tie all my loose wires back here at the threshold to the existing wiring back here. That way I know it's not going to interfere with putting the panel back in place. 
We can take our dust cover, slide it over our four pole connector. Whenever we're not using our wiring, we can simply store it right by our spare tools underneath the floor covering here. Start putting all of our push pins back in place, lining up our panels. If the push pins got stuck in the body like they did here, you're gonna wanna pull those out and put them in the threshold before you put the threshold back. It'll make it a lot easier getting everything back in place. And you're just gonna wanna take the push pin, find the little ridge on it, and slide it back on to the panel itself. To get that threshold back in, you may have to lift up on the floor covering a little bit. Get everything lined up. And we just go along the edge, pushing it back in place. Push our tie down hook back in. And we replace our push pins. Now with the push pin, you wanna make sure you push in the outer section first. And then once you have it pushed in and lined up, then you push in the center section and it'll lock it in place. Now the last thing we need to do is to test our wiring to make sure that the circuits are all working properly. So I'm going to plug in my four pole tester. And if you need one of these, you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com using part number I26. So now I'm going to go ahead and run through my lights and verify that they're all working properly. So if I turn my headlights on, we can see that those are working. Along with my left turn signal, right turn signal, and my brakes. Now all we have left to do is to hook up to our trailer and hit the road. And that'll finish up your look at the Hopkins plug-in simple vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number HM11141820 on our 2013 Toyota Avalon.